Hello students, a very, very good evening to all of you. Welcome to my channel. This is a very important class on movement poets and today we will talk about Philip Larkin. But before starting, I want to give you a, a brief introduction about myself. My name is Rishti Mukherjee. I have qualified NTA UGC NET exam in English literature three times and have also qualified West Wing all set examination. I have two years of teaching experience. Moreover, I have also taught in NPTEL online course from IIT Madras three times. So that is all about myself. This is the link of my Telegram channel. So those of you who have not joined yet, please join to get notification of all important classes. And also please don't forget to like, share and subscribe my YouTube channel so that many more new learners can join. And these are the timings of the classes. So Monday to Friday at 8.30 p.m. Saturday, Sunday off. So don't forget to join me live. Please subscribe the channel and press the bell icon to get notifications. Okay, so uh, today our topic is Philip Larkin. We have already covered Ted Hugh as a movement poet. And in that class, I have also discussed uh, what is movement poetry, what are the main features of movement poetry. So in this class, we will directly move on to uh, Philip Larkin. First of all, we will talk about his biographical details and then we will move on to his major poems. Okay, so let's start. So the first uh, <clears throat> thing is that, uh, good evening Papri, welcome. The first thing is that Philip Larkin's timeline is 1922 to 1985. Okay, so he is also a very important movement poet. This is the image of Philip Larkin you can see. We will start with his biographical details. Good evening Raj Kishore, welcome. Now Philip Larkin, uh, his full name was Philip Arthur Larkin. He was born on 9th August 1922 in England and he studied at Oxford University. He did various jobs like uh, he worked as a librarian in Wellington Public Library and later he also became librarian in University of Hull. So as a librarian he was very successful. He worked as a librarian in different uh, universities and different places and he had uh, earlier he had a tendency to, uh, to stammer, so speech problem. Uh, good evening Papri, welcome. So speech problem uh, is there uh, in Philip Larkin's early uh, stage. So he was a stammer, uh, he, he stammers briefly uh, as a child and uh, Larkin at 60, that is a famous essay collection written by Anthony Thwaite. Uh, he edited, actually not written, he edited this famous collection of essay Larkin at 60. So basically in these essays, uh, he is actually celebrating the 60th birthday of Larkin. Okay, 60th birthday of Larkin. So that is why it is important. Larkin at 60, which is a collection of essay uh, written by, uh, sorry, edited by Anthony Thwaite. So this is an important thing, remember. Okay, good evening, Shupriyo, welcome. And uh, very interesting thing is that he refused to become poet laureate. He was offered uh, that post, but he refused to uh, receive that honor. And he died of osteophagial cancer. Okay, he had personal tone in poetry, sense of loss, rootlessness and isolation. So a lot of uh, important themes. Basically in Philip Larkin's poem, you will find uh, more pessimism. Ted Hugh is not in that sense pessimist because uh, in Ted Hugh's poetry, uh, we, are, uh, we have seen different kinds of animal images, right? So uh, different animal images and through that animal he is revealing some very common human traits, human vices, human tendencies. So basically the poems of Ted Hugh is actually centered on society or you may say that uh, it is centered on uh, common problems or the process of poetic creation as in Thought Fox. But in Philip Larkin's poetry uh, you will find a little bit of satire obviously. And at the same time, he has a sense of loss, a sense of nostalgia, rootlessness, isolation, and at the same time, death also, a very prominent theme in Larkin's poetry. Okay, uh, yes, so that is, about, uh, uh, that is about the major themes of Larkin poetry. 
ओके अच्छा एक चीज और ओसियो फेजियल कैंसर इट मींस द कैंसर इन थ्रोट इन द फूड पाइप एक्चुअली द फूड पाइप व्हिच रंस बिटवीन थ्रोट एंड स्टोमक उस जगह में जो कैंसर होता है उनको हम कहते हैं ओसियो फेजियल कैंसर सो फिलिप लार्किन डाइड ऑफ दैट ओके सो दैट इज अबाउट द बेसिक डिटेल्स रिलेटेड टू हिज लाइफ नाउ इन डिरेक्टली मूव ऑन टू हिज इम्पॉर्टेंट पोएम्स द फर्स्ट पोएम व्हिच इज वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट एंड आई होप यू हैव आल्सो रेड द पोएम दैट इज चार्ज गोइंग पब्लिश्ड इन 1955 एंड रिमेंबर दैट वी हैव आल्सो मेंशनड इन प्रीवियस क्लास ऑन टेड ह्यू दैट मूवमेंट पोएट्स फॉलो द कोलोक्वल स्टाइल द लैंग्वेज इज वेरी सिंपल colloquial style the apparent language is very simple the uh, style of composition is very simple but there are uh, a lot of inner meanings attached to that so they protested against the uh, scholastic style of modernist writers like t.s eliot james joyce and others they they protested against that and they were, were in favor of colloquial style so philip larkin as a movement poet he also maintained this colloquial style and chart going it's it's a beautiful poem it's a satire against religion we will discuss the poem in detail published in 1955 basically it was included in the collection the less deceived published in 1955 and the title title means this title not the title chart going it is this title the less deceived it is taken from uh, hamlet from ophelia's praise i was the more deceived so that is the source of the title of this collection the less deceit okay now uh, what is the main uh, story of the poem here uh, the poet presents a speaker the poetic persona you may say who visits a church so uh, the church is located um, outside uh, the hustle and bustle of society and the whole area is very um, solitary in that sense so the speaker very casually visits a church which means that he doesn't want to uh, visit the church but he just goes so he doesn't have that motto uh, to visit the church or to pray but he is traveling uh, to uh, he is traveling on the road and at the moment unko laga ki ek bar चार्ज में घुसकर उसे देखकर आए कि क्या है तो वो ऐसे ही चला गया बट नॉट विद द इंटेंशन टू प्रे सो वेरी कैजुअली ही विजिट अ चार्ज एंड ही नोटिस दैट द चार्ज इज नॉट सो वेल मेंटेन सो इट लुक्स लाइक अ काइंड ऑफ डिजर्टेड हाउस ओके इट लुक्स लाइक अ डिजर्टेड हाउस सो जिसमें अब कोई नहीं आते एंड द he uh, he mentions some major points that the church is less visited which is that the flowers are not so fresh so the flowers which uh, was offered much earlier on any sunday morning or evening that flowers are still there but uh, it has not been uh, it has not been removed or it has not been properly washed so the flowers are not fresh which indicates that people don't come here regularly the church is now an abandoned building abandoned building okay so he is visiting that church which is now abandoned by human beings and uh, there was a custom that when you uh, came to pray uh, sorry when you come to pray to the church you need to put off your hat so that was the custom to to uh, to show respect जैसे जब हम मंदिर में जाते हैं तो बाहर में हम शूज उतार कर जाते हैं राइट सो दैट वॉज द कस्टम टू शो रेस्पेक्ट टू द गॉड और टू द आइडल और टू इन एनी काइंड ऑफ स्पिरिचुअल थिंग वी पुट ऑफ अवर शूज आउटसाइड द टेम्पल एंड वी गो इन साइड सिमिलरली वेन यू आर विजिटिंग अ चर्च यू नीड टू put off your hat that was the custom but the narrator uh, was not wearing any hat because he he did not want to visit the church he just casually uh, went into that so he did not have any hat so he removed his bicycle clips to show respect instead of hat now this is a very interesting image it is just talking about making fun of religious rituals and it also symbolizes how all this religious rituals have become a hoax it has no specific significance right now it has lost its grandeur so anything can be removed whether it's a bicycle clip or hat that doesn't matter so he is very skeptical of religion 
Uh, yes, uh, absolutely, Shubhriyo. Ophelia is Hamlet's Ophelia, where the title has been taken from. Okay, so removes his bicycle clips to show respect instead of hat. Now, this is very interesting image. People don't come here regularly. That is proved by the condition of the church. And uh, when uh, he uh, moves uh, outside of the church, he slides an Irish sixpence into the collection box. So that was also a custom that whenever you are visiting a temple, you, you need to uh, put something in the collection box, right? So in church also, there is a collection box and he very casually slides an Irish sixpence. And very interestingly, Irish sixpence at that time was obsolete. So ye, uh, us time chalta nahi tha, hai, at that time. So that kind of... Uh, uh, money which has lost its significance he is dropping that coin into the collection box so every gesture uh, of the speaker or uh, the way philip larkin is describing that everything shows that uh, all these things all these rituals all these minute details which are associated with religion are absolutely uh, skeptical and absolutely meaningless right now and he comes to the conclusion that this is not a worthy place to be visited. That is the conclusion that church may ab log nahi aate hai because church ka utna zyada significance nahi raha. So basically he is not denying the existence of God but he is skeptical about institutionalized religion. Yes, he, uh, he is not uh, denying religion in general or God in general but institutionalized religion. That is what he objects to. Because institutionalized religion has so many uh, limitations and so many rules and regulations to be followed. But the main thing that is spirituality, that is missing. So the author is missing spirituality among all these rituals. The rituals have been performed well, but there is no spiritual sense. For example, when you are uh, dropping a coin into the collection box, what we normally do, we normally pray. That I am dropping this coin into uh, this collection box. So God, please fulfill my wish. We uh, we do that just because of uh, to fulfill our own intention or our own aim. But the narrator is just sliding. So it, it's very casually he is dropping the uh, money in the collection box. And he is also casually removing his bicycle clip. So he also has no proper sense or he doesn't have the interest to follow all these religious rituals. So this institutionalized religion has faced a great uh, deal of decreasing at that time. But uh, the narrator is saying that humanity will always have a hunger to ask serious questions and obviously they will turn to religion. So charge going, it normally talks about the uh, mm, the number of visitors which are becoming less in a church, a church that is abundant, nobody comes to pray here, nobody comes to uh, take care of that church, nobody comes to wash all the flowers and all these things inside the church. But the poet keeps faith that humanity always have hunger to ask serious questions. Humanity loves to deal with spirituality, loves to deal with something abstract ideas like death, like a birth, like soul, Okay, they, they love to deal with that and as long as they have interest in that ideas, they will definitely turn to religion. So religion should be there, but institutionalized religion has lost its importance. That is uh, what Larkin is trying to say. And it's a beautifully written poem. Very beautifully Larkin is describing each and everything, each and every point. Um, okay, good evening Jyoti, good evening Cherry. Um, welcome. Yes, so this is about a uh, charge going and I hope you have read the poem. So this is not very difficult. Now we move on to next poem that is the Whitson Weddings published in 1964. The Whitson Weddings. Sorry. Uh, this is actually a collection of poems and Whitson Weddings uh, is the title poem included in the collection. So we poem ki baat kar rahe, Whitson Weddings. So the speaker is undertaking a train journey on a Whitsun Sunday. Okay, so it, it's a special Sunday. The speaker is undertaking a train journey and very interestingly, he is alone in the train. The whole train is empty and the day is hot. So it's a uh, daytime journey. 
and it's a wheat sun sunday so the the poem uh, sorry the the poet alone is uh, visiting or uh, alone is going to the through the train okay and uh, during that train journey he is reading a book okay he is reading a book now uh, when uh, the train passes a uh, platform after platform see notices a wedding ceremony तो वो तो ट्रेन के अंदर बहता है एंड वो ट्रेन की खिड़की से वो बाहर देख रहे हैं कि एक वेडिंग सेरेमोनी एक वेडिंग प्रोसेशन जा रहा है एंड लार्किन इज नोटिसिंग दैट द गर्ल्स आर वेयरिंग ऑर्नामेंट्स द फादर सीम बिजी तो जैसे एक वेडिंग प्रोसेशन जैसे जाते हैं वैसे ही जा रहे हैं एंड लार्किन इज ऑल्सो सींग दैट एट एवरी स्टेशन वेन द ट्रेन स्टॉप न्यूली वेट कपल बोर्ड द ट्रेन so through throughout the train the passengers uh, who are boarding the train later they are all newly wed couple so throughout the stations in almost in each or every station there is a wedding procession and some newly wed couple they board the train so all this uh, amount of celebration he is watching and finally he comes to the conclusion that death is inevitable for all now how can he conclude that because uh, it is a kind of contrast between uh, the liveliness of our life and the coldness of death jo hum har bar contrast karte hain theek hai so liveliness uh, of life and uh, coldness of death that is actually contrasted here and the poet is seeing that all these things all these processions all these enjoyments they are all uh, nothing but transitory and ultimately uh, we all should die so basically this train journey it is not a simple train journey it is talking about journey of life if we consider our life as a train and philip larkin may be representative of all human beings who is the only passenger so the poet is journeying uh, through his life and uh, at some moment see needs to travel alone obviously to so life mein hamesha uh, to hamare sath log nahi hota hai humko kabhi kabhi akele hi kuch kaam karna padta hai so he is doing his task uh, alone and after a few moments see got some uh, co passengers in the form of newly wed couple so newly wed couple here symbolizes that liveliness of life or that a uh, positive uh, moment or you may say that um, the beginning of a new life okay so newly wed couple symbolizes the beginning of new life and at the same time the poet is thinking that this uh, romanticism or this uh, love between uh, these two people this this is also transitory nobody knows that what will happen with them in future so now they are very happy they are uh, very romantic they are trying to spend their time alone but after a few moments maybe they will be separated so nobody knows what will happen with us in future so at every station which uh, means that at every segment of your life or at every moment of your life uh you will get some kind of jubilee and celebration uh you may get some kind of happiness but everything is transitory it will pass away soon and the only inevitable thing is death so the last station for this train is death yes life is a journey i am a traveler absolutely absolutely train symbolizes the journey of life and another thing uh, you need to remember that wheat sun sunday is ka kya significance hai basically western sunday is a holy day in christianity and it is actually considered the seventh uh, sunday after easter so christmas and easter ye dono bahut hi significant celebration hai christian uh, christian people ka aap jante ho so easter tide jab celebrate hota hai uske baad seventh sunday that is known as wheat sun sunday so in that holy day the poet is thinking of death and he is watching all these celebrations so bahar mein wo dekh rahe hain kitna zyada khushiyan hai but everyone uh, is larking but but the fear of death is larking within everyone theek hai to so death hamesha khada hai but kabhi kabhi uh, we forget to think of death uh, when we become so happy in our life yes yes journey has a starting point which is birth and an ending point that is death the running train symbolizes the speed of life yes absolutely the speed of life so very uh, metaphorical poem right in that sense very symbolical but apparently very easy 
as it's uh, it's written in a colloquial language. Okay, moving on to next poem, Obed, very beautiful poem, and it is a uh, um, very compactly centered on the theme of death. Published in nineteen seventy seven. So Obed, uh, it was first published in Times Literary Supplement uh, in a magazine and later included in the collection High Windows. Okay, so basically the title Obed is very ironical because Obed refers to a song sung to welcome dawn. So it's a morning song, and you all know that we always associate morning with something uh, positivity, with new hope, with new beginning, right? So morning, always a नए एनर्जी के साथ नए जोश के साथ हमको आगे जाने के लिए मोटिवेट करता है सो मॉर्निंग मीन्स मोटिवेशन एंड दैट इज वाई ऑबेट इज अ स्पेसिफिक सॉन्ग टू वेलकम डॉन तो जनरली आपने भी कुछ कुछ ऑबेट पढ़ा है जैसे गुड मॉरो बाई जॉन डन सन राइजिंग बाई जॉन डन ऑल दिस पोएम्स आर कॉन्सिडर्ड एज ऑबेट बिकॉज इट वेलकम्स डॉन और इट सेलिब्रेट्स द ब्यूटी ऑफ डॉन Okay, so Obed is that kind of poem, but here Larkin is not celebrating dawn. Larkin's Obed is very bleak, dark poem. It is about death. So it 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 is not a song sung to welcome dawn, but it is a it is a dirge. It is a funeral song which is sung to welcome death. Okay, so its ka kya plot hai? The poet wakes up early in the morning and feels horrified, thinking of his own death. So the poet wakes up early in the morning, almost at dawn time. तो तब भी मतलब रात की अंधेरा बाहर में है एंड देयर इज नो सनलाइट सो जस्ट बिफोर डॉन द पोइट वेक्स अप एंड ही फील्स हॉरिफाइड थिंकिंग ऑफ हिज ओन डेथ नाउ ये नॉर्मली नहीं होता है राइट वेन एवर वी वेक अप इन मॉर्निंग वी ऑलवेज थिंक समथिंग पॉजिटिव वी वी नेवर थिंक ऑफ डेथ आफ्टर वेकिंग अप इन मॉर्निंग राइट right? तो जितना भी हम आ, बुरा सपना देखते हैं रात में जब हम सुबह व्हेन वी वेक अप इन द मॉर्निंग वी नेवर फील दैट नेगेटिविटी राइट तो हम अपने आप को ऐसे मोटिवेट करते हैं कि चलो जो बीत गया सो हो गया बट नाउ अ न्यू डे हैज स्टार्टेड सो यू नीड टू फाइट विथ न्यू स्पिरिट ओके सो मॉर्निंग सिंबोलाइज दैट बट लार्किन सोवेड इज नॉट दैट लार्किन वेक्स अप इन अर्ली इन द मॉर्निंग एंड इमीजिएटली ही थिंक्स अबाउट हिज ओन डेथ यस टेर आर ऑफ डेथ सो बेसिकली यस भोरे गान सो बेसिकली इट इज टॉकिंग अबाउट दैट दैट लार्किंग फियर that uh, that fear which is lurking inside you or inside every human being so larkin cannot come out of that and larkin is obsessed with the idea of death he has an obsession with this theme of death destruction decay to hamesha uske poem mein ye theme ghuma phira ke aate hain so he feels horrified thinking of his own death and basically ye kaha jata hai by many critics that uh, larkin wrote obed after the death of his mother so maybe he is uh, concerned about death much more sorry after the death of his mother so the, uh, that was the context of this poem as many critics have interpreted it okay so larkin sobed is talking about that okay next poem mein aate hain ambulances dekho ambulance itself symbolizes something uh, negative or something dark associated with death तो ये हमेशा होता है कि जब भी हम एम्बुलेंस देखते हैं रास्ते में वी ऑलवेज फील फियर विद इन आवर हार्ट ये हमेशा होता है हम डर जाते हैं भले ही एम्बुलेंस में कौन है कहा जा रहे हैं हमको नहीं पता बट दैट साउंड ऑफ गोइंग एन एम्बुलेंस ऑलवेज टेरिफाइज वाई बिकॉज यू ऑलवेज बिकॉज दैट इनडायरेक्टली रिमाइंड ऑफ आवर ओन कंडीशन ओके okay, कि हमको भी कभी ये जाना आ, शायद हम हमारे भी नसीब में ये लिखा है कि हमको भी कभी एम्बुलेंस में सोना होगा सो आफ्टर थिंकिंग दैट वी फील टेरिफाइड बट ऑटोमेटिकली आप भी आपने भी नोटिस किया होगा कि जब भी हम एम्बुलेंस देखते हैं हम हमेशा ये कहते हैं कि आ, किसका क्या हो गया वट हैज हैपन वाई द एम्बुलेंस आर मूविंग सो रैपिडली वी ऑलवेज फील टेरिफाइड फॉर एग्जाम्पल यू आर गोइंग टू अ वेडिंग सेरिमोनी फाइन and uh, on the road uh, you have heard the sound of an ambulance immediately your excitement uh, jo excitement aapke andar tha wo kahin na kahin thoda 
सा हैम्पर जरूर होगा ये आवाज को सुनकर बिकॉज दैट साउंड इट सेल्फ इज वेरी टेरिफाइंग एंड वेरी यू मे से दैट वेरी अलार्मिंग विच वॉन्ट्स अस अबाउट आवर ओन डेथ Yes, it arises a fear of loss. Absolutely. So, ambulance. The poem is also talking about that. Published in nineteen sixty-four. It it is included in the collection, the Whitson Weddings. मैंने आपको बताया था कि ये collection of poetry है जिसमें Whitson Wedding नाम से ही एक poem है जो poem हमने discuss किया तो उसी collection में ये published हुआ था. Ambulance. Ambulance is always associated with death or something horrible disease also. एंड लार्किन uh, क्या कह रहे हैं लार्किन इज कंपेयरिंग एम्बुलेंस विद अ कन्फेशनल रूम विच कम्स टू टेक अवे आवर सोल तो क्या होता है कि uh, ये मैंने आपको बताया था कि चर्च में एक कॉन्फेशन रूम होता है एंड उस कॉन्फेशन रूम का क्या काम होता है कि वेन एवर अ क्रिमिनल वो किसी भी पर्सन के सामने अपना गिल्ट नहीं बता पा रहे हैं बट ही वॉन्ट्स टू सरेंडर तो उनको कन्फेशन रूम में लिया जाता है एंड बिफोर एंड इन साइड दैट कन्फेशन रूम नो वन इज प्रेजेंट ओनली ही इज प्रेजेंट बिफोर द इमेज ऑफ जीसस एंड तो वो मतलब भगवान के सामने सब सच बोलता है एंड दैट्स हाउ ही रिपेट सो दैट इज द पर्पस ऑफ कन्फेशनल रूम टू मेक द बॉर्डन लाइटर of that person but to make the burden of guilt lighter so that confessional room actually signifies uh, some kind of purification or you may say salvation theek hai to larkin compare kar rahe ambulance ko like a confessional room theek hai which comes to take away our soul तो वहां से एक नया जर्नी आपका शुरू होता है कॉन्फेशनल रूम से एक नया जर्नी शुरू होता है जिससे या तो आप आपकी सोल को डायरेक्ट सेल्वेशन मिलता है या फिर उसे थोड़ा बहुत पनिशमेंट के साथ अल्टीमेटली uh, कुछ ना कुछ उससे आपको प्राप्त होता है सो दैट वाज द पर्पस ऑफ कन्फेशनल रूम सो लाकिन इज सेंग दैट एम्बुलेंस इज ऑल्सो लाइक एन लाइक अ कन्फेशनल रूम एंड एम्बुलेंस ऑल्सो कम्स टू टेक अवे आवर लाइफ जैसे कन्फेशनल रूम हमारे सोल को प्यूरिफाई करते हैं इट टेक्स अवे आवर सोल्स टू सम अनादर वर्ल्ड सिमिलरली एम्बुलेंस आल्सो सिग्निफाइज समथिंग डार्क एंड समथिंग यस अ सेंस ऑफ लॉस एंड आल्सो यू मे से दैट इट टेक्स अवे आवर लाइफ टू इटर्निटी ओके सो लार्किन इज सेइंग दैट व्हेन एम्बुलेंसेस पास पीपल ईगरली लुक एट ये भी एक बात है कि जब भी हम एम्बुलेंस पास करते देखते हैं हम सब ईगरली नोटिस करते हैं उस एम्बुलेंस को कि वाई दिस एम्बुलेंस इज गोइंग एंड अचानक आप ये भी uh, आपने ये भी देखा होगा कि सपोज यू आर गॉसिपिंग विथ योर फ्रेंड्स बिसाइड अ रोड ठीक है आप रोड साइड में डिस्कस uh, कर रहे हो आप बातें कर रहे हो अपने दोस्तों के साथ एंड सडनली यू आर हियरिंग द साउंड ऑफ एन एम्बुलेंस तो इमिजिएटली वो टॉपिक चेंज हो जाते हैं फॉर एग्जाम्पल आप कुछ फनी टॉपिक के ऊपर बात कर रहे हो आपके दोस्त कोई जोक सुना रहा है एंड यू ऑल आर लाफिंग बट सडनली यू हैव हर्ड दैट साउंड ऑफ एम्बुलेंस एंड ऑटोमेटिकली दैट टॉपिक विल चेंज कोई ना कोई जरूर पूछेगा कि भाई किसका क्या हो गया ठीक है एम्बुलेंस क्यों जा रहा है कहां पर जा रहा है तो दूसरा पर्सन कहेगा कि हाँ मैंने सुना है कि उस जगह में एक एक्सीडेंट हुआ है मे बी उसी पर्सन को लेकर जा रहे हैं सो ऑटोमेटिकली द डिस्कशन द टॉपिक ऑफ डिस्कशन शिफ्ट टू That particular man who is inside ambulance. तो ये normal human instinct है ये हम सबके साथ होता है Larkin is observing that. And when ambulances pass, people eagerly look at and they are trying to see the white face of the patient who is going to die. सो उनके अंदर में कौन है ये भी देखने का बहुत ईगरनेस होता है लोगों के मन में कि सपोज एम्बुलेंस कोई ट्रैफिक सिग्नल में खड़ा है या फिर किसी भी जगह में एम्बुलेंस खड़ा है तो हम अक्सर देखते हैं कि किसको वो लेकर जा रहे हैं हु इज पर्सन वी आर ऑलवेज ट्राइंग टू लुक एट एंड दैट पर्सन इज गोइंग टू डाई सोन ओके सो दैट इज हाउ लार्किन इज इंटरप्रिटिंग एंड थ्रू दैट दे पॉन्डर ओवर दे आर ओन मोटालिटी that is what i am saying that it reminds us of our own death and it proves that we all are bound in a single chain all of them have to lie in ambulance one day and must die to wahi baat ki universal mortality man is mortal that theme uh, becomes very prominent or that idea becomes very prominent whenever we see an ambulance it's an extremely bleak and pessimistic poem throughout the poem it is talking about death mortality uh, eternity and all these things uh, okay 
गुड इवनिंग सोमानाथ यस एम्बुलेंस साउंड इज लाइक एन ओमेन विच हिंड सेट सम डेंजर एब्सोल्युटली अच्छा ठीक है ठीक है सुमन अच्छा सुमन कोई बात नहीं आप रिकॉर्डिंग देख लेना गुड इवनिंग सो एक्सट्रीमली ब्लीक एंड पेसिमिस्टिक वर्ड नाउ वी मूव ऑन टू टू नॉवेल्स तो अब तक हमने बात की लार्किन के पोएम की बट लार्किन हैज रिटन टू इंपॉर्टेंट नॉवेल्स नॉट सो इम्पॉर्टेंट बट यस ओनली टू नॉवेल्स आर देयर सो यू नीड टू नो एटलीस्ट इन ब्री तो पहला नॉवेल है जिल पब्लिश इन नाइनटीन फोर्टी सिक्स Jill is a novel which was set in war time Oxford. Larkin was educated at Oxford University. मैं आपको बताया था. तो उस Oxford में इसका setting है. War time Oxford. During war it was set. तो main character है John Kemp, who is a young man and he lives in Lancashire. He comes to Oxford and experiences the privileges of southern life. तो एक नया lifestyle वो enjoy कर रहे हैं उसके privilege को. वो ऑब्जर्व कर रहे हैं एंड ही इज अट्रैक्टेड टू द रेकलेस लाइफ स्टाइल ऑफ हिज रूम मेट क्रिस्टोफर वार्नर तो ही इज फेसिंग अ कॉन्फ्लिक्ट वो जिस जगह से आए हैं उस जगह का लाइफ स्टाइल कुछ अलग है एंड इन दैट पर्टिकुलर प्लेस ही इज एक्सपीरियंसिंग अ डिफरेंट लाइफ स्टाइल अ प्रिविलेज लाइफ स्टाइल एंड ऑल्सो विच इज वेरी रेकलेस तो एक रेकलेस लाइफ से वो इंस्पायर हो रहा है और यू मे से दैट ही गेट्स डिस्ट्रैक्टेड विद दैट रेकलेस लाइफ ऑफ हिज रूम मेट क्रिस्टोफर वार्नर एंड इसी के ऊपर ये नॉवेल चल रहा है कि क्या उसका मतलब किस तरीके से वो इस दोनों जो कंफ्यूजन है उसके मन में कि विच लाइफ यू नीड टू चूज उसको वो बैलेंस करने की कोशिश कर रहे हैं एंड इस काम में उसको हेल्प कर रहे हैं उसके इमेजिनरी सिस्टर जिल imaginary sister not real his imaginary sister is jill which is, uh, who is mentioned in the title okay so that is about this novel not so important but yes it is talking about a dilemma a conflict between two different sets of lives just remember that and also the major character okay um, yes absolutely right papri makes us sad for a few minutes yes absolutely um ओके नेक्स्ट में हम आते हैं अ गर्ल इन विंटर पब्लिश इन 1947 अ गर्ल इन विंटर व्हिच इज आल्सो एन अदर नॉवेल रिटन बाय फिलिप लार्किन ओके सो गर्ल इन विंटर अब ये जो गर्ल की हम बात कर रहे हैं दैट इज एक्चुअली कैथरीन लिंड ओके सो दैट इज एक्चुअली कैथरीन लिंड हु इज अ लाइब्रेरी असिस्टेंट ओके एंड दिस नॉवेल एक्चुअली टॉक्स अबाउट this novel is talks uh, this novel is talking about how she has left his work for 12 hours to take an ailing colleague into hospital again dekho koi na koi ambulance hospital ka theme aa rahe hai but it is highlighting the uh, sense of um, hospitality uh, or sense of kindness sense of beauty inside that girl catherine lee ओके okay. अच्छा सुप्रियो इज सेइंग डिसेप्शंस ओके सो मैं शॉर्ट में आपको बता रही हूँ डिसेप्शंस इज आल्सो एन अदर पोएम इट इज एक्चुअली अ सॉन्ग रिटन बाय फिलिप लार्किन एंड इट इज आल्सो अ वेरी डार्क एंड ब्लीक पोएम एंड इट टॉक्स अबाउट द कंडीशन और द रेप ऑफ ए यंग वोमेन बेसिकली द थीम हैज द रेप ऑफ ए यंग वोमेन एंड how after that rape uh, both the rapist and the girl uh, changed uh, in that uh, um, uh, uh, after that event that is the story of deception it's a very short poem and it is written uh, in a song like mode so basically bahut hi interesting hai iska plot theek hai and it was uh, and the poem begins with larkin uh, Larkin is utilizing a passage from uh, London Labour and London Poor. इसका एक रेफरेंस है ही इज इलास्ट्रेटिंग द पैसेज फ्रॉम लंडन लेबर एंड लंडन पुअर रिटर्न बाई हेनरी मे ह्यू इट्स एन अदर वर्क तो इसका एक एल्यूशन है इस पोएम में डिसेप्शन में एंड इट इज जस्ट टॉकिंग अबाउट दैट यंग वोमन हु हैज फेस्ड अ लॉट ऑफ वायलेंस फ्रॉम एन अदर man but after that incident both of them uh, have changed so dono ka hi ek uh, emotional um, psychological ek change ho raha hai and uh, basically larkin is highlighting that time uh, is the 
बेस्ट हीलर एंड टाइम के साथ साथ सभी चीजें बदल सकता है कुछ यूनिक चीजें हो सकता है टाइम कैन परफॉर्म मीराकल एंड टाइम कैन ऑल्सो मेक सम वन फॉरगेट सम ड्रेडफुल मेमोरी ठीक है तो इस टाइप का एक थीम है डिसेप्शन ओके यस तो यस एब्सोल्युटली तो दैट इज अबाउट लार्किन वार पोएट हाँ सुमन वार पोएट्री मैंने आप मैंने करा दिया था वार पोएट्री मीन्स यू आर टॉकिंग अबाउट विल्फ्रेड एन रूपर्ट ग्रुप ऑल दिस पोएम्स सो आई विल सेंड यू द लिंक इन द टेलीग्राम चैनल ओके सो यस सो दैट इज अबाउट फिलिप लार्किन आई होप इट इज क्लियर टू ऑल ऑफ यू so please read all these poems in detail because he is a very important poet and obviously is poem ko padhne mein bhi aapko acha lagega because the themes are very beautiful and also the language is easy so you can also understand it okay so that is for today's class thank you all for joining this is the link of my telegram channel those of you who have not joined yet please join to get notification of all important classes and also please don't forget to like share and subscribe my youtube channel so that many more new learners can join so these are the timings of the classes monday to friday at 8:30 pm so monday uh, next class will be on monday and in that class we will talk about aldous huxley another very important modern novelist so we will talk about alda saxley in monday's class okay so bye bye everyone thank you all for joining good night and see you all uh, monday at 8:30 pm